EWTN invites you to join us for benediction and devotions from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament and Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Adoration Prayer. My Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are really here in this sacrament. Night and day you remain here, compassionate and loving. You call, you wait for, you welcome everyone who comes to visit you. I thank you, Jesus, my divine Redeemer, for coming upon the earth for our sake and for instituting the adorable sacrament of the Holy Eucharist in order to remain with us until the end of the world. I thank you for hiding beneath the Eucharistic species your infinite majesty and beauty, which your angels delight to behold so that I might have courage to approach the throne of your mercy. I thank you, dear Jesus, for having become the priceless victim to merit for me the fullness of heavenly favors. Awaken in me such confidence in you 
that their fullness may descend ever more fruitfully upon my soul. I thank you for offering yourself in thanksgiving to God for all his benefits, spiritual and temporal, which he has bestowed on me. Grant me grace and perseverance in your faithful service. Amen. O Sacrament, most holy, O Sacrament divine, O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be at every moment of time. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be at every moment of Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in Him might have eternal life. Dominus Fobiscum, <coughs> Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum, On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? Verbum Domini That story of our Lord's uh, miracle in calming the stormy sea always remind me of one of my worst days of my life. It was supposed to be a fun day, but personally it wasn't. It was after the World Youth Day in Australia that the friars and I spent a few more days to visit uh, various places in Australia before flying back to the United States. And one of the places we visited on our last day was this thing called the Great Barrier Reef. This was located off of the 
Queensland coast. It's in the Coral Sea. It's supposed to be the largest coral reef in the world, and it's known as one of the most, one of the beautiful places to visit. While this visit there was surely a memorable one, a negative memorable one for me, that is. I think the terrible weather was really the main cause of it because we took a boat ride to get to this place, the Great Barrier Reef, but once we left our dock, the boat started rocking terribly. It wasn't even five minutes yet. And so almost everyone in that boat got sick terribly, started throwing up, either men or women, old or young. Everybody is basically almost throwing up, including myself. And this bag that they give us for, I don't know what we, I call it, barf bag, they got filled up quickly that these workers at the boat constantly going to different passengers offering if we want a new bag. You better believe it, we want a new bag. And after a while, the boat was very smelly because of this thing that people get sicker and sicker. And the anti-motion sickness tablet didn't really work. But after a while, I met this uh, nice lady from Florida, and she, uh, she was a scuba diver. She suggested to me to go outside and just sit there outside in the back of the boat to get fresh air. And she also told me to keep my vision focused on the horizon of the land. And I should feel much better, she said. Okay, I, I took her advice, I trusted her, and so I did what she said, and it actually worked. I felt better, I feel better. And, but then what happened was, while focusing on the horizon of the land, uh, one time I saw what seems to be a whale, but I wasn't sure what it was, some kind of big fish. And so I started focusing on it for my entertainment of the day. But because of that, I start getting nauseated again and start getting sick again, filling up more of my barf bag. And what makes it worse was the trip took us uh, two hours one way just to get there and then two hours coming back. So it surely was a very long day. It feels like five minutes felt like eternity. But from that experience, the Lord confirmed to me without doubt that I'm not called to be a Navy chaplain. I'm just not cut out for that kind of work. Also, during this whole experience, I couldn't help but thinking of this particular passage that I proclaimed earlier, how our Lord calmed the stormy sea, but before that, He was asleep. He was asleep on a cushion, probably a wet one, after all the water splashed into the boat during this uh, stormy ride. I kept on telling him, Lord, how could you be sleeping with this kind of rough ride on the sea? You must have been really tired and really sleepy not to be awakened from the storm. And again, this event was certainly a memorable one for the disciples, especially after this, the stormy sea got calm and that Mark recorded this in his gospel. But not only that, but this account is also a reflection for the image of the church. And the church from the beginning has experienced her many storms of life in history the storm of the Roman persecution and other storm uh, of various persecution which she experienced in her time. And during these stormy times, it's natural for her members, our Lord's disciples, to wonder just like the disciples, Lord, why are you sleeping? 
Aren't you aware of what's happening? Don't you care that your disciples are, are in danger? And sometimes these are the very questions that we ourselves ask the Lord today. Lord, why are you sleeping? Aren't you aware of what's happening in the United States that our president and his administration are in the process of limiting our religious liberty? That they are in the process of forcing your Catholic health care to provide services which you would be offended, which would many unborn be killed? that they are wanting us to violate our conscience? Don't you care that your disciples are approaching dangerous situation? Our Lord's reproach to the disciples is the same reproach to you and me. Why are you terrified? Why are you afraid? Don't you have faith? And truly, our Lord's authority it's unlimited. It's over all, over nature, over demons, over diseases, over death. No president, no government can ever outdo God's authority. Even though our Lord allows various storms of life come our way, in the end, nothing, nothing can truly harm those who trust in Him. The true medicine for overcoming any earthly fear is this faith in God. And this faith in God comes from the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. And the book of Sirach tells us, he who fears the Lord is never alarmed. He who fears the Lord is never afraid. This is the most repeated command God said to his people, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, don't be afraid. Blessed John Paul constantly said to the young people, don't be afraid. Why does God constantly tell us not to be afraid? Why did Blessed John Paul constantly tell the young people to fear not? The reason is because this is the enemy's strategy in trying to get us to be afraid. The evil wants us to be afraid. Because when we're afraid, we get weakened in our faith, we get weakened in following our Lord, and when we're afraid, we get distracted from fulfilling our mission as baptized Catholics, and when we're afraid, eventually we're led to abandon either totally or most totally our mission and our duties as true Catholics. However, when we refuse to give in to fear, we disable the enemy's strategy, and when we have no fear, then the enemy trembles in fear because of our faith in God.
Anem de celo prestitis Oremos. Deus qui nobis sub sacramento mirabili passionis tu e memoriam rele cuisti, tribue quesumus, ita nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tu e fructum in obis igeter sensiabus, cui vivis et regnas in saecula saeculorum. The divine praise is together. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ through God and through man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen.